Okay, so we're going to come back here to Airlines Manager, the Tycoon version here again. And uh, I'm going to show you some other little tips here. Now, something I want to point out to you. Now, there's a little bit of debate if you look online and with the YouTube community. There's debate whether you want to go with small or whether you want to go with medium or if you want to go with long haul carriers. And uh, in Tycoon especially because every day is basically the equivalent of seven days. Uh, I really believe you're best off to go with long distance. So let's just look at the airplanes for a second here. You'll notice that all of my planes are all A380 800s pretty well. There's uh, a couple routes where as a secondary plane, I had another long haul plane just to pick up the extra leftover, um, leftover capacity. You'll notice too, almost every one of my planes here on the side, sorry, it keeps doing that loading thing. Uh, almost every plane on the side here is 853. So let's just click on this first one. This guy's going from Hong Kong to AAE. And so let's just go to the configure screen here. Okay. So this is the largest plane in the game as of right now. And so I have it maxed out at 853 economy seats. And so if you do the math on this, just to spare the boring part, um, Suffice it to say, the eco fully maxed out is always going to make more money than the business or first class. See, if I just take that 853 down here for a second, see, I only get 473, you know, basically half, give or take a little bit. If I go first class, I get 203. So I get like a quarter of the seats. Well, the seats are not double for business, and they're not four times as expensive for first class. They might be in real life, but they're not in this game. And so I always go for eco, uh, economy every time. I go for economy. Now, sometimes if it's such a big airport and such a busy route that let's say there's enough for almost two planes, but not quite, then you'll see me do something like this. I'll maybe I can only squeeze seven. 20 and then I'll just oops sorry I'll fill the rest up with say business and I'll do something like that but only if it's really close so and then you'll also notice I got three cargo these are kind of like free cargo here once you open up the cargo part you may as well add these they they don't take away from the seats see they just add in now if I wanted to put that down I could have 40 cargo if I felt like it but I'm gonna lose out on the economy seats and it's not worth it so the best setup is an a380 800 with 853 economy passengers and three cargo and so I'll just click X because you don't want to change that all right and so let's just uh, let's look at the flights here on this particular plane <clears throat> just for instance okay so you see he does basically one a day this isn't quite 24 hours but it's close and so uh, the other thing, the other trick you want to do is find routes that are 24 hours. Now, it's true you're not going to find them all 24 hours. So I kind of, my lower cutoff is 20 hours. <clears throat> but what I do is on each continent, I fill in all the 24 hours first, say the 23, 24 hour ones. Then I'll go down the 22, then 21. And then if I feel real generous, I'll go down the 20. So. But I'd never go under 20 unless I just kind of want to go to a neat little island in the middle of the ocean or something that maybe is slightly under that. And just for fun, I'll go there just so I can have another airline flight going sort of to the middle of the ocean. But barring that, here's what this particular flight makes in revenue. Now, this isn't profit. This would be revenue. So <clears throat> it makes $4 million there. If you look under results, it makes $4,669. 774 and so <coughs> sorry about that and so it makes almost 5 million so that's that's why you want to go long haul with the big airplane so I'll click X there and so you can see if you when you buy this airplane you'll see it shows the payload there shows the seats shows the cargo 
yeah, you'll see it shows the payload, the seats, the cargoes, tons, and the profitability. Like this particular plane, you can see I've had it um, for a while now. It costs $403 million for this plane, but so far I've made $1.2 billion, and I believe that's revenue, not profit. And so I've made quite a bit out of it. It's flown 263 flights, and it has 6,312 hours. And the age is eight months. Okay, so that lets you know what that how that works. Now let's X out of this. <clears throat> now let's go to the how to buy an airplane. So we click back on the airplane. Let's go airplane purchase there. Now you see your short haul, medium, cargo aircraft, and long haul. Now airplanes can take some cargo, but obviously those cargo planes are just cargo. And there's a reason you want to do that. And that's in another video. So we're already in long haul. So as you can see at the far end here, it's 403 million to buy this plane. Now, because I've researched many different um, researches that cheapen up the planes, you can see um, I believe it's yeah 12, 12 planes. If I buy 12 at a time, which you can see I have five uh, five billion dollars. Uh, I could buy 12 planes and it would only cost me 4.38 and I'd actually save 9.25% uh, on each one. There's a few more levels of savings I can research and uh, I'm not sure where that max is out if it's 15% or 12% or whatever it is. But if you can buy, once you get advanced like I am, you can buy a maximum of many airplanes at the same time and you can actually save money and get more airplanes. This airplane should cost. Uh, just under 4.9 billion, and instead it's going to cost 4.38 or 4.4 billion. So basically, I'm I'm getting like a plane for free. I should be paying for uh 11 planes, and I'm actually getting 12. So you can see how that kind of works there. And the other thing you want to know that pertains to the airplanes is uh back over here. Oops, wrong one. Still getting used to this new uh setup here. <clears throat> in uh, research, if you click on aircraft there, you can see there's several things you can research. So let's stay with the top end here first. So right there, I can, this first one is LH stands for a long haul. So I can research this plane. As you can see, I already have. That's why there's a check mark. You notice there's none in the medium haul one because I didn't bother doing that because it's not worth it. And there's none in the small haul. So I didn't bother with that either. Okay. So in order for us to open up the second one, you've got to do a certain amount of researches in this first section. So you see I did the top one's Boeing and the bottom one is Airbus. So as you can see, I did both. And then this one right here, the wallet with the dollar sign, this is how you get your, uh, your discounts on multiple purchases of airplanes. And this is where you want to research them. And so then it's 1 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 1. And so all that helps. And then right here, this is your aircraft, aircraft wear more slowly. And so once your aircraft at the first of the game, when it hits 10%, you start having incidences and whatnot. And so you just kind of don't want that. It's a little bit of a hassle. So <clears throat> the slower your airplanes can uh, wear, the better. So you can research that as well. Now, something I should mention, you can only research one thing at a time. So you can see here in the second one, there's three Boeing aircraft, and you actually do one at a time. And then there's one Airbus. So there's four long-haul ones. And you don't have to do every one, by the way. You can actually skip as soon as Section 3 opens up. You don't have to do everything there in any one spot, just enough that you get to the next section. So you can see I max out my discounts there. Now this wrench one is a breakdown price, so it saves the price of incidences and breakdown, saves you money. <coughs> Sorry about that. And then you can see I maximized the next one there to lower the cost. You can see I did three Boeing and three Airbus long haul flights. Now this little coat of arms thing. This uh, I researched this and it gets real expensive now for the next level up. But the first one, I took the 10% to 11. That means I can wear the plane to 11% and not have incidences. 
and now I've got it to 12 by doing the next one. You can take it to 15 and you can take it to 20, which would be ridiculously expensive, I would assume. So you can see here, there's still a bowling plane I haven't researched. And I did do the Airbus ones. Now this guy in a trench coat here, he's, or a lab coat, whatever, he uh, saves the age rating speed. So time is less impact on your aircraft. The engineers reduce their aging by percentage. So that's also a good thing to have. It just helps you save money in the airplanes. And now this is the bottom one. You can see I did both Boeings here. I did, and this is the granddaddy of them all, the A380-800. So it's going to take you a while to work yourself down to even having that plane available. So do what you got to do with long haul planes. Use whatever you got to use as you're getting set up. But long haul is the way to go, especially in Tycoon. Like every day that you actually play in real life is worth seven days in the game. So you can build up money pretty quickly. And then this uh, airplane hangar here. Now this is helps you with your maintenance costs, lowers the cost of your check A and check D uh, costs on your airplanes. Now the difference between check A and check D, <clears throat> the difference is check A just brings your maintenance down to 0%. So your wear factor goes down to 0%. And you, um, it's almost like having a new plane, except the age range stays the same. So the age goes from 1 to 5. So the higher that gets up, when it gets into the 2s and the 3s, you start having issues just because of the age of the plane and not because of the wear factor. So you can imagine you know, an older plane have more issues. So check D will, what it does, it's way more expensive than check A, but it brings your wear factor down to zero and it reduces your age factor down to one. It's as close to having a brand new plane as you can get. So it basically resets and the way I do it personally, other guys might do it different, but I reset the whole fleet all at once. So whenever I pay that and nowadays it's, it's in the two and a half billion dollar range I pay now because I have so I have like a hundred and some airplanes. Then it puts the whole fleet as if I just bought it today. So you can see how that would be extremely important. But it is expensive, no question about it. And so that's uh what you do with airplanes there. And so that shows you how you buy them. Now you can lease them too. Now I tried this. If you lease an airplane, one bonus over leasing that you might find interesting when you're starting out is you can lease pretty well every plane uh, except for just a few of these but most of them you can lease them without having to research them so that's kind of a nice bonus if you look at it that way or at least it used to be that way anyways <clears throat> and so I have a lease for so long the thing with the lease is say this Airbus A380 instead of paying 403 million you can see here that we would lease it for 132 million up front or 133 almost. So you'd pay that up front. That'd be like kind of like a purchase price type thing. And then once a week for, uh, I believe you get to pick how many weeks. Yeah, you do. It goes up to as many as eight weeks. You would pay, um, let me see, let me go back again. You would pay 10 million per week for eight weeks to lease that airplane. And then at the end of the lease, you have the choice of renewing it and, or you can let it expire and then the plane disappears and you'll get back your 133 million dollars that automatically goes back and the plane goes back to the company and it costs you nothing the other thing that's interesting to note is even if you took this for eight weeks you can actually send the plane back early and it it doesn't seem to me like you pay a penalty on that not like normal life you know when you take a lease back and you're going to get hosed but uh, you can take it back early and you do fine with it. So a lease will get you in the game a little bit faster. It will get you up and running, making money. But those lease payments get kind of expensive when you tack on a bunch of leased air, airplanes. They do add up. They really do. And so it's up to you. It might be something to do at the beginning. But I would suggest as soon as you can, get out of them. Let them all go back, even if you're not serving some of your passengers. Don't worry about it. You'll get planes to them eventually. And the other thing I should probably mention, and it is a big one. You notice here there's lines 
looking at that airplane <clears throat> the line see the economy section is 288 in this particular plane the business is 157 first class is 67 and then uh there might be room for a little bit of cargo it doesn't really say the number but it's, it's probably not that much so here's the deal you can't change those Remember how I showed you earlier how you could, if you buy a plane or even if you already own the plane, you can adjust that to be whatever. Well, you can do that. So for someone like me that's always uh, aiming at the economy range because you make more money that way, this is not going to help you because you're not going to make as much on the business. You're not going to make as much on the first class. You may be serving an airport with tons of economy demand and no demand for first class, or they could have tons of First class demand, no demand for economy or whatever. So you don't, this, this is not really good unless you're at least maxing out these three departments in your plane. If you're not maxing them out, you're really, really, it's not worth it getting that lease plane. So that's something for you to think about and consider. Um, that's a, that's a biggie right there. Cause a lot of people, they lease a plane that think they're doing good, but then, Afterwards, they don't realize that, you know, yeah, I had spots for 60 first class passengers or 67, whatever it was, but you only have 10 getting on the plane. So that those other 57 spots are open for nothing. And had you had that full of economy, they would have been full, right? And you would have been making more money. So you see what I mean? So it makes a big difference. The other thing I want to show you, and I've done this mistake a couple times. So we click on this Airbus again. I went back to the purchase thing. You can see over here in the top corner, right before you go confirm, see all these kind of these hub names. You want to be careful you put this in the right hub. I've uh, by mistake put things in the wrong hub before. And on the iOS version, you cannot change that. Once it's in one hub, an airplane, you cannot make that magically go to another hub unless they just added that in this new update. You couldn't before. What you can do though, if you ever do that, <clears throat> is you can either one, buy a few more routes and then just throw the planes on that route. You can do it that way. Or, uh, I went on to my laptop to the web version of the game. And in that version of the game, you can change hubs on an airplane. So there is a way around it. It just involves using an external website on a computer or something. If you're straight up <clears throat> an iOS guy or iOS girl, you may not like that. And so another thing you should know when we click on aircrafts here <coughs> is you can um, go to your maintenance book here. And I had mentioned it earlier about doing maintenance. You can see right now my wear on my airplanes is very low because I just came off a D check here a couple days ago. And my breakdown by age is very good. But you can see my graph. This is over the past 30 days. I got busy one day and let my airplanes get up into like the teens of wear factor. And you can see that's where all those white dots are going a little higher. And so what happens when that, when there's an incident per se is you end up paying a little bit of money. Something gets broke. It's, I've never seen one for me. That's like a big airplane accident. It's just, you know, flat tire, electrical fire, blah, blah, blah. It's always just little things. I don't know. Maybe if they, if you let it go real bad, maybe it ends up being something real bad. I don't know. But anyways, that's something for you. That, so if you want to do maintenance, click on this maintenance button here. And see, so you can change the slider here. So you'll only show airplanes that <clears throat> are between like 10 and 100% or age-wise between 2 and 5 age. Now, I always just leave it exactly the way it is there at the bottom. And so if I wanted to do a complete for every one of my, I guess I have 164 aircraft, of which almost all of them are A380, 800s. <clears throat> if I want to do a complete check A, which would bring all of the wares back to zero, it's only going to cost me 50, 810. Now I assume that gets more expensive as the wear goes up. Right now my wear is almost at zero anyways. And then my restore, my check D, which will put the age back to zero or back to one I should say and basically makes it like a brand new airplane on both sides it's 782 million right now but I have seen it as high as two and a half um, so that's when it where it gets higher so that's you would click on it here and then you would click confirm if you want to go ahead and pay that 
and I believe it's like a day it takes a day or something like that <clears throat> so the idea is to stay on top of that and the other thing I will show you um, because it kind of fits in here is uh, just gonna see where okay there it is so I clicked so let me go back so I can so I clicked on this little box it's open there and you got this maintenance game the maintenance guy's name is Bob so you can play this for free <clears throat> and here's how it works you got this it's like a crane game in reverse it drops a ball and it'll hit things now when it hits something once you can you can click it wow that was really fast <laughs> and so the idea is you're trying to get into the number four or the number twos on the side and you're trying to avoid the number one you see that only what it did is it took so many planes I'm not sure how many exactly wouldn't be all 164 when you're new it'll do all of them up to like I don't know 20 or 30 or something <clears throat> and so you see my wear on say this top plane was 1.59 it brought it down 21% because that wasn't a very good game. And so it's down to 138%. So that didn't do a whole lot. So if we want to, we can play again for free. I'll go ahead and do that. And we'll just see if we can do better next time. <clears throat> so it's going to show you a little ad. You don't got to click on anything. Sometimes there are ads you can actually play a little bit. But you don't have to. Oh, it looks like this one is. So just. Because we're going to kill time anyways, so I'll just play it. But uh, it's basically counting down one way or the other whether you play it or not. And so you just got to kind of wait a little bit. Eventually there will be a little X up in the corner that will tell you it's done. <clears throat> and when it's done, then you're good to go. And as soon as I see it, we'll just say there we go. There's the X. Okay, perfect. Now, we can start again. So we'll try this again. Now when it hits something, you can hit it. See how when it highlights white, if you get it right away, sometimes you can hit it and it will come out. So you can try to control where the ball bounces. Once again, I got in the bronze, so that's not real good. I got 25% off, so if we go back to these details, you can see the top one started at 3.05. Now it's down to 2.8, and the age range wasn't affected. Now you can use these T things to play again. I would not do that because they're really hard to get. So don't bother wasting them. Just do this play again for free if you want to use that or just pay. There is rules there too in details if you need a further explanation. So that's Aircraft Manager's Tycoon. That's kind of everything you need to know about airplanes themselves and how they work, how you buy them, how you lease them, how you take care of them, and uh, even how much money they make. I definitely would definitely stress go long haul, go long haul, go long haul. The first time I played this game, I tried it with small haul. I tried a little bit of medium haul, and it just takes blessed forever to get anything accomplished. With long haul, you're playing my planes. If I click on how much I'm making here, which should be in here. Uh, let's actually let's go back airplane. Actually, no, sorry. Network management. Let's go there. So, as you can see, uh, my best hub that's making the most money is Delhi because it's in a third world country. So, it's got lots of, uh, <clears throat> it's got lots of economy demand. You can see here in Abijan, I got, you can't tell, but I know I have two airplanes on that route. And so together they're making eight million dollars, so four million each. The next one they're making seven point seven. Next one I only have one plane, four point six, four point four, four point four, four point three. If you get into the medium planes, you might be lucky to get a million, maybe million two. If you get in smaller planes, sometimes like two hundred thousand that you're making per flight. And so it just doesn't justify it. You need to go long haul all the way. I wouldn't even bother with the other ones and definitely go economy. That's the way to go. That's what works for me. And right now if I click on my star count here, and I'm not the best guy ever, but when I first started not that long ago, uh, several months ago, I was ranked 70,000, something like that. Now I'm ranked 1,242. My airline value is 51 billion, which is actually pretty low compared to the people around me. In fact, let's go ahead and show you that. Just kind of 
show you how much this uh, long haul economy strategy is worth. You'll see the guy <clears throat> right under me, LMI Dare. He's making slightly less, his value is a little bit less than mine. He's making less SP. So he's probably running the same thing as me, long haul economy. But the guy below him, his, he's worth more, but he's only, he's actually making less than us. And then the next two guys, they're worth like almost double what we are, what me and the guy below me are. And they're making less per day than we are. So that just goes to show you the long term or long haul is the way to go. All right. So we'll wrap it up with that and we'll come back again with another aspect of, uh, airlines manager tycoon. Thanks for joining us.